Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Nathan, and today we need to talk about some big and bad updates on the Brady Kachuk contract situation. A situation that's just gone so much worse over the past few days since we last updated the situation regarding Brady Kachuk. Obviously, the difference the disagreements between the long-term, short-term AAV is still there, but we've seen some big updates from Darren Draper specifically detailing a trade that could be in the works even if Brady Kachuk does sign this next contract. But what is the latest streamers surrounding Brady Kachuk. What is the latest news and will Brady Kachuk actually get traded away from the Ottawa Senators? Watch till the end for all the streamers, all the news and hit that subscribe and if you are new 60% of people that are watching are not subscribed. If you like cocky and if you like trade rumors this channel is is the place to be. Now, once again, these updates come from Darren Drager, who recently appeared on TSN 1050. And before today, once again, the big discussion was around if the Sens would sign a short-term or a long-term deal. That still is the case. But it seems like even if the Sens sign Kachuk to a deal, they might just end up trading him anyways and basically be moving on from him at the same time. And there's been a lot of updates surrounding that over the past day. And personally, for me, it's super disheartening as a as a person who wants to see the Sens do good, wants to see them actually pay their players like they did with Thomas Shabbat and other guys in the past and didn't do with guys like Mark Stone and Eric Carlson too, I want the Sens, this Sens team to be different. And with the latest rumors and news surrounding Kachuk, it doesn't seem like it's going to really happen that way. Now, Darren Drigger on TSN 1050 said this quote, which was extremely important and will be extremely important going forward in the Kachuk trade rumor and, and contract sweepstakes. And Darren Aaron Drager said this. If he goes on a three-year bridge, I don't think Brady Kachuk makes it past year two. Maybe early in to year three. Now, with that quotes, Darren Drager saying that if Kachuk does sign a short term, if Kachuk gets what he wants, which is a short term deal, he might not be a senator past year two and might just get moved on from by the Ottawa Senators flat out. Even if they do sign him, it seems like especially if it's a short term deal, the Sens have pretty much moved on from him in that case. Case, which is super disappointing since Kachuk would still be at RFA even after that three-year deal and you'd still have an opportunity to negotiate with him and have his rights for at least another year on top of that. That to me is a super confusing, super disheartening quote and it just doesn't seem like, especially on a short-term deal, the Sens trust Brady Kachuk or trust themselves enough to build a contender that Brady Kachuk wants to be with. That to me is the worst part and this whole Kachuk situation has just been awful from day one. I get not paying him $9 million on a long-term deal. That makes sense. But to not have any trust in him to give it your team a chance after three years, especially with the rebuild they're trying to complete, is definitely tough to see. Now, Darren Drager also goes on to say this, which is another just quote that makes my entire day completely ruined, but we'll go into it right now. Darren Drager says this, as long as Eugene Melnick is the owner of the Ottawa Senators, he's not going to want to wrestle with another dispute. And now we're starting to speculate on a trade. And man, these two quotes, it's not really too surprising, especially with how the Kachuk situation has gone. But this is just confirmation that almost nothing has changed. And we'll get into some specific specifics later on. But when it comes to the situation, he says, again, Darren Drager says, if he does sign a bridge deal, which is what Kachuk wants, he might not even make it to year three before a trade happens, and that Eugene Melnick doesn't want another dispute, doesn't want another controversy, and uh, might just move on if he doesn't have him sign long term. And I just got to say this right now, it falls completely in line with what Eugene Melnick has done. First off, the part where he doesn't want a dispute, can you just frig off, dude? You have had so many disputes, so many controversies as your time as a Sands owner. I mean, just over the past six, seven years, the amount of times this guy has gone into media and has spewed just absolute crap is an all-time league high as an owner. I mean, Harold Ballard is shivering in his boots with what Eugene Mumlick has been able to accomplish in that aspect. And, and considering all of this, I don't buy that whatsoever. But in a contract perspective, I do buy Eugene Mumlick going in this direction. We've seen time and time again. I mean, Mark Stone is the most recent example of a high-end player that Eugene Mumlick wanted to get, obviously, on a lower term or a big term lower AAV and then Mark Stone simply said no because he's an amazing NHL player and deserved to be paid a lot more and in the end the Sens and Pierre Dorian had to trade him away pretty much start the rebuild I guess from scratch and 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 basically give up one of the greatest players of the past decade the Sens have had that to me I think is kind of a repeat of the same situation where you have this great up and coming winger who's done so well yet you aren't willing to pay him what he truly deserves and you are 
aren't willing to even, you aren't even willing to budge whatsoever. I mean, Yuji Mummick is saying in this situation that he doesn't want any disputes. I think he's basically saying, if you don't sign for what we want, we're going to trade you. And he's done that time and time again. And really the only player he hasn't done that to is Thomas Shabbat. And Thomas Shabbat signing was great. And it's good to see a guy sign long term. But at the same time, when you're looking at guys like Tim Stutzla and Josh Norris and Shane Pinto, all these great young players coming up, and you see the Kachuk situation, what is the NHL supposed to think about this? What is Sens fans and hockey fans supposed to think about this? Because the Sens have this great upcoming team, yet only one of the guys has actually signed. And I thought Brady Kachuk would be a huge situation if he was able to sign long term. I think that would be a big indication of the Sens going forward. But now this whole situation and potentially trading him on a bridge deal, that to me is horrible news for the Sens going forward. Now, once again, it seems like Thomas Shabbat is the only big high-profile player the Sens and UG Melnick have actually paid over the past few seasons. UG, uh, when it comes to Shabbat, he ended up getting his huge eight-year deal at $8 million back in 2020, and this was a guy that was locked up as a cornerstone defensive piece, and I can truly get why you'd sign him long-term, and even though I'm not sure if Shabbat is worth $8 million right now, I think he definitely can be, especially over these next few seasons, but this is a guy that was a, an absolute no-brainer to sign long-term to get under under contract and they did and when Thomas Shabbat signed I was willing to eat some crow because I didn't think that Thomas Shabbat would get paid as much as he did but the Sens gave up the pile of cash for him and they got it done which I thought at the time was a huge stepping stone and a huge progression from what we saw in the past with the Sens and I thought that could lead to Brady Chuck getting signed long term other guys sticking with the Sens like they should and this Kachuk situation has come into the fold and we once again have to deal with Eugene Melnick not budging whatsoever, sticking with his with his plan, which obviously has not worked, and, and just try to be as stingy as humanly possible. And the part that I don't get for the Sens is why they're so stingy about a bridge deal. Because to me, I, I explained it in the last Brady Kachuk video, but when you're building a team like the Sens, and, and Pierre Dorian has said that they're out of the rebuild, if you're out of rebuild and truly want to contend. Eugene Melnick said they would win a Stanley Cup in 2024. If you're truly going to contend and win a Stanley Cup in 2024, why wouldn't you sign him for a three-year deal where he can still be an RFA after that deal? And if you're going to win a Stanley Cup in 2024, that year when he's about to become another uh, another contract, when he's about to come and become an RFA again, you would have won the Stanley Cup and been this great contender? I mean, Kachuk would have obviously wanted to stay for that team and commit long-term after that. But as it states right now with the Sens, they're not in a position where Kachuk needs to be on the team. He doesn't need to take a huge pay cut to, to continue this great contender. That's not the case here. Yet the Sens don't want to sign that short-term deal and don't want to bet on themselves. That, to me, is the worst part. The biggest thing you can do as an NHL team is bet on yourself. We've seen teams like Tampa, Washington, do it in the past and, and continue with their core and, and just build as strong as possible. Yet the Sens, as soon as they get strong, I mean, 2017 is a great example, as soon as they get strong and and have the signs of a true contender, they blow it up without any reason whatsoever. And the Sens and Yuji Melnick just don't have any faith in building a team that can truly compete. If they aren't willing to sign Kachuk, they can kiss that 2024 Cup goodbye because Kachuk's the type of player that can lead a team to that playoff success. He is a playoff player tr tried and true. And the fact the Sens aren't willing to sign him or even sign him to a bridge deal means to me they don't have confidence in their team and they don't have confidence they'll be a contender, let alone a Stanley Cup cup winner. And the thing is, I still think giving Brady Kachuk more than $8 million, or even $8 million for a long-term deal would be an overpayment to start. At the same time, if you're Brady Kachuk, can you really blame him for trying to get as much money as possible from a team that doesn't have that clear of a future if they're not going to pay their guys? I mean, this is a situation that for Kachuk, I think is the biggest example of why you maybe should leave the Ottawa Senators. This is a situation that is disheartening. If you're a core piece, a fourth overall pick, a guy that was looked at as a future captain of the team, team, yet you're getting disrespected on this just because you want a bridge deal that would still be, is still take you as an RFA after the contract, and the Sens don't have any confidence in you or the team itself. If I was Brady Kachuk, why would I want to stick around for an eight-year term, right in the best years of my prime, when I could go to a team that has confidence in, him, in, in myself, has confidence in the team themselves, and actually wants to build a contender around me and pay the guys around me? Thomas Shabbat was a great first step, but it seems like the 
Dom Domino's have completely crumbled with the Kachuk situation, and that progression has just been seemingly lost. And it's it's horrible. I mean, Kachuk is a player that is so crucial to the Sens' for success going forward. And even if it is a three-year deal, I get not having him in the long term and being scared about that. But at the same time, to basically trade him outright and give up on him if he signs a bridge deal, that to me is terrible for a guy that was such a big part or is still a big part of this Sens team going forward, at least hopefully. And it's just so sad to see that Eugene Momak has once again put his, dipped his feet in, in this Sens, in this Sens lake and, and has just kind of ruined it in that way. It's really disheartening. And I don't think we'll see uh, this extent to other players. I think they will get guys like Tim Schutz signed. I think they will get some other players signed. But it is still a big indication. The Sens don't really have true confidence in themselves. If they aren't willing to sign a guy like Brady Kachuk, who's basically the epitome of their play style, the epitome of their franchise, and could be a future captain, if not a big leader of the team, and is a big leader of the team, then wh who are they going to sign afterwards? Are they going to give Shane Pinto what he wants? Are they going to make a deal with Josh Norris, Tim Stusa? Are they going to get these guys under deals when they're actually actually threatened with some big money on their deals? I, I just I just don't know. I mean, Thomas Shabbat, he's a Canadian defenseman, and uh, in a market like Ottawa, yeah, they were going to pay a guy like that, but for an American left winger or a German left winger or a, a American center. Are they going to pay these guys what they're truly worth? We did not see that with Mark Stone. We did not see that with other players the Sens have had in the past. And I'm just so worried, so worried that in the future, they're going to repeat their mistakes. But honestly, they've already repeated their mistakes with the, with, the, with the Kachuk situation. It's already happened. And I'm just so sad to see it kind of going once again, having this whole situation cycled again with this brand new Sens team that was supposed to be the team to lead them to true playoff success. Let's just say this as well for Brady Kachuk. Why would you even sign a bridge deal if you know you're going to get traded in year two? I mean, if you want to get out of the centers, I guess that's the quickest way. But to me, for the Sens, it's just an absolute disaster right now. They're probably not going to sign him to a long-term deal. They're probably not going to sign him to a short-term deal. Honestly, at this point, kind of see him signing maybe a five-year deal, try to get into free agency as fast as possible. And the Sens basically giving up on him at that point. That might be the best compromise, maybe, because over the next five years, maybe you can build the Sens with Kachuk into that contender. But at that point... You're basically all you're basically guaranteeing that he goes into free agency while you had a chance to sign him possibly after the three-year bridge deal. So for me, in almost every single situation, it's the Sens giving up and not doing what they should have done in the first place. When it comes to Brady Kachuk, I want to know your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think about this situation? What do you think about Eugene Monk? What do you think about these latest trade rumors? Do you think he'll get traded? What do you think is going to happen with Brady Kachuk? Let me know all your thoughts. Make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell if you haven't already. Make sure you share this video with your friends. Get Ed out to anybody you know that likes hockey online in real life. It doesn't matter. Everyone is welcome to the Grout Gang. And of course, hit that subscribe or hit that bell. <laughs> For more hockey trading or content right in one playlist. My name is Nathan, Eugene, sign Brady Kachuk already, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.